Hello, how are you all doing? What we're going up to in this video? Cool, it's a bit cramped in here. Well, we're going to be removing the petrol tank. We're going to be trying to get the spark plugs out to make sure they're sparking okay. And then we're going to try and start the bike up and get it on takeover, like I tried to do in the last video. So I can listen to the death rattle and hopefully come to the conclusion what the problem is. And hopefully the bitch is going to be kind to me in this video. Yes, your nice new paint doesn't last long in this British climate. Oh yes, so I did file the caps down, so they would fit down the tunnel. Anyway, let's get the spark plugs out and see if they're sparking. Well, they look a bit sooty from the uh, last start-up when I couldn't uh, put the choke in and it wouldn't tick over. Okay then, ignition on. Press the start button. Here's the spark plug. Let's try and get some light. Let's see if we could spark. What about the other one? Absolutely nothing. Right, so there's definitely no spark there. Right then, let's get the workshop manual and check the fault diagnosis on no spark at the plug. And hopefully we'll work out what the problem is. But bear in mind, I do suffer from a dyslexia. Okay, no spark at plug. Ignition switch not on. Engine stop switch off. Do we really look that stupid? Fuse blown. Check fuse for ignition circuit. Battery voltage low. Ah, that sounds a bit familiar. The current draw required from the starter motor is sufficiently high that an undercharged battery may not have enough spare capacity to provide power for the ignition circuit during starting. The current draw required from the starter motor is sufficiently high that an undercharged battery may not have enough spare capacity to provide power for the ignition circuit. OK, so I'm going to have one more attempt at charging the batteries because I'm not too sure it uh, charged up properly on the uh, last charge because, well, as you can see, my battery charger is very vintage. Even the mains plug is made out of Bakelite. So that must be worth about a million pound or something. And I did notice that these uh, wires were pretty corroded and uh, frayed. So I just uh, cut them off, undone the little knots and screws, trimmed the wires off, put them back around the screw and screwed them back up. It's still saying that that's high and that's low and it's right down here. But on the uh, multimeter, I'm saying I'm getting 16 volts, which is, I'm sure, better than I was getting last time. Plus, it's on the uh, trickle charge because there is two settings. That is like the high setting. That is the low setting, like a trickle charge. And I think it's good, better for the batteries to keep them on trickle charge, especially when they're brand new like that and you've had to charge it six times already. So, yes, hopefully this time it's going to work.
Well, at least I've got free energy to make a cup of coffee. Yes, it's like all of a sudden the cost of living has quadrupled. I mean, we go shopping and everything's double the price. Yes, we're all in the same boat, I guess. It's called the Titanic. And we all know what happens to that. Yes, I don't like to say it, but Great Britain is in deep recession right now. Where's Bono? Where's Boy George? Where's Sting? Where's Bob Geldof? You'd think they'd be doing a charity thing for us, wouldn't you? Or at least making a TV advert. This child has to walk five miles in the cold, wind, snow, ice, rain, just to get his bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yet, yeah, all joking aside, everybody is suffering, struggling to make ends meet. Even big YouTube channels are saying they're not doing it anymore. You know, people that do things like this, projects, you just cannot afford to buy the parts. So instead of putting a video out once a week, twice a week, you have to put videos out every three months to give yourself a chance to save up for the parts you want. But anyway, hopefully things will get better soon. OK, so I've tried to keep it dark, so hopefully you can see the spark. But uh, these two, with my finger and thumb on them, are sparking. It's not a brilliant spark, but they're sparking. But this one with the other cap on, it's just not sparking at all. So, so I'm thinking this coil could be uh, not working properly, but uh, I have got some new high tension lead somewhere so I'll find that I'll replace this with some new high tension wire and uh, see if we get any spark Okay, so that's a little bit alarming. Still getting no spark from this number two spark plug. I've swapped the plugs with the other plugs, so it's nothing to do with that. What I think I'm going to do next is, say, take this XT lead out, screw it out from the uh, coil, and uh, swap it with this one. And see if we get any spark then. So let me do that, and I'll be back. And uh, just the other side of this wall, Cyril the Squirrel is having a great time. So just out of interest, I thought I'd get this uh, number three out as well on the same coil. It's like two, because number two isn't working, not sparking at all. So I thought I'd try number three and uh, put it on there to spark. I don't know if you're going to see it, but lo and behold. There's no spark on that one either. Put the spark plug back in that one. Yeah, it is sparking just 
The same with that one. I think that one's sparking as well. Yeah. So this coil was sparking. And both these two are not. these terminals are on correctly because that's a blue wire and there's a little blue bit on that side there's a black bit on that side that's the black wire so I'm pretty sure they're on the right way around so yes that's probably about as far as we can go this week it looks like I've got to try and find a coil and try and find the money to pay for it and hopefully it'll start running right and we can get it on tick over anyway stay well stay safe and I'll see you on the next one Make a YouTube channel, they said. You'll have lots of fun, they said. You'll make loads of money, they said. Lying bastard. I'll see you in another life, brother.